Hello and welcome to the video. Matthew here and we're going to look at question one, which is a 30 mark question on statistics and data. So we're told that Nadia is planning to change her car this year. She wants to buy a Toyota Prius, but is curious about how the value of the car reduces over time. So she looks up a website and records the sale price of similar model Prius cars that are up to eight years old. We're shown this data in this following table. So we're given the age of the car and then the list price in thousands of euro. And now we're going to look at question one, part A, and this is worth 10 marks. And this wants us to display this data in a scatter plot on the coordinate plane below. So a scatter plot is just when we have two variables, then we plot all the coordinates, and then this will produce a scatter plot. It's useful for being able to find if there's a correlation between two variables. And we must remember that correlation does not imply causation. So the age is on the x-axis, and then the list price in thousands is on the y-axis. So our first coordinate then will be 1. 32.5 as the age is 1 and the list price is 32.5 thousand euro. So we want to mark that in 1 and then 31,500, be something like that. And then 226,000, 324,000, 321,500 and so on until we have all 11 coordinates in the scatter plot. So our scatter plot should look something like this. So now let's have a look at part B, the question, and this is worth five marks. So here we're asked to calculate the correlation coefficient. We have to give our answer correct to three decimal places. So remember at the start of the question, I said that scatter plots are useful for seeing if there's a correlation between two variables. We also have a thing called a correlation coefficient, and this can be worked out on your calculator. And based on that correlation coefficient, we can tell if there's a relationship between both variables. So if you don't know how to find it on the calculator, just follow me along on the screen while I'm doing it on the on-screen calculator. And let's see what we get. So on your calculator, click menu and then two, and then two again for y is equal to eight plus bx. And then put in the 11 x values and then beside them make sure that you have the corresponding 11 y values. It doesn't matter if you put in all the x values first and then the y values or the x and y together as long as you have the x value beside the corresponding y value. So let's put in the 11 x values. So that's 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in that order. And now we're going to put in the corresponding 11 y values. So it's going to be 32.5, 26, 24, 21.5, 20, 20, 17.5, 19.5, 13, 11.5, and finally 11.5 again. And it's important, as I said before, to have them in that same order. And now once you have all your data in, you can clear. And now you're going to click option. And now you're going to click three. And we can see that the OR value is equal to minus 0 0.93944 and correct to three decimal places, that's minus 0 0.939. So this is nearly minus one, and a correlation of minus one is a strong negative correlation. So in this case here, basically, that means that they are correlated, but it's a negative correlation. So as the years increase, the price goes down, basically, okay? So the older that the car is, the lower the price is likely to be. So that's our answer for part B. And now we're going to look at question C, which is also worth five marks. So here we have to find the coordinates at the point where the mean of each variable lies, to plot the point and then hence or otherwise draw the line of best fit. So we're gonna to have to find the mean of the X values and the mean of the Y values. So remember to find the mean, you just add all the values together and then divide by the total number of the values. So we're going to do the X values first. So it's going to be one plus two plus three plus three plus three plus four plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight divided by 11. So let's pop this into our calculator now. So it's 4.18. So that means that the mean X value is 4.18. And now we're going to do the same thing but for the Y values. So it's going to be 32.5 plus 26 plus 24 plus 21.5 plus 20 plus 20 plus 17.5 plus 19.5 plus 13 plus 11.5 and plus 11.5 divided by 11 again. So let's pop this into the calculator and we get 19.72727273. So we're going to round that up to 19.73. So our coordinate is going to be 4.18, 19.73. So we have to plot this point and then draw the line of best fit. So let's plot the point first. So that should be somewhere around here. So remember, we also have to draw in the line of best fit now. So that line is going to go through the pink point there and it's going to try and have roughly half the variables on either side. It won't always be possible to have half them on either side, but you should try and aim for around half on both sides of the line. So I'm going to draw it in like this. So that purple line there is going to be my line of best fit. So that's my answer for part C of the question. And now we're going to move on to part D, which is also worth five marks. So part D of the question wants us to find the equation of the line of best fit and explain in words what the slope of this line means. 
So remember, the equation of a line is going to be in the form y is equal to mx plus c. And this is on page 18 of your formula and tables book, if you're not sure, where m is the slope and c is where it crosses the y-axis. So we're going to try and see now first where it crosses the y-axis. So you can see that it crosses the y-axis here. So we're going to say that that's about 31.7 thousand euro. There is some tolerance here, depending on how you've drawn your line of best fit. Not everyone's will cross it in the same place. So if you have anything between 28 and 35 there, you would have gotten the marks for that. So if my one here, as I said, it's about 31.7. So that's going to be my value for C. And now M is the slope. So to find M, I'm just going to do rise over run. You can, of course, pick two points and use the formula. However, I think rise over run might be slightly easier. So I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to pick this point here and this point down here. And I'm going to use my formula that the slope is equal to rise over run. So we're going to see how much it rises by and how much it goes out by, which will be the run. So the rise there is from 10,000 to 20,000. So it's a rise of 10,000 or just in our case here, it's just going to be 10 as they're in units of 1,000. And now let's see how much it goes out by for the run. So it goes from 4 to 7.5, which is a run of 3.5. So it's going to be 10 over 3.5. And 10 divided by 3.5 is equal to 2.857. So I'm going to round that to 2.9. However, remember, it's negatively sloped as it's going downwards from left to right. So it's going to be equal to minus 2.9. So now let's write in M and C for our equation. And then we'll get the equation of the line. So the equation of my line of best fit was Y is equal to minus 2.9X plus 31.7. Now remember, your answers might be slightly different depending on how you drew your line. Now, of course, we do have to also explain in words what the slope of this line means. So our slope was equal to minus 2.9. So this means that for every additional year in age of the car, the value of the car will fall by 2,900 euro. So that's your answer for part D of the question. And now we're going to have a look at part C, which is the final part of the question. And it's also worth five marks. So part D says that if Nadia doesn't want to spend more than 18,000 euro on the car, using any appropriate method, determine what age is the newest car that she can afford. So basically, we're going to let the price be equal to 18,000. So that means that y is equal to 18, as remember y is in units of 1,000. So if I put y is equal to 18 into the equation for the line of best fit, I'm going to solve for x, and then that should give me the age of the newest car that she can afford to buy. So remember, our equation was y is equal to 31.5. No, it wasn't. So remember, our equation was y is equal to minus 2.9x plus 31.7. So now it's going to be 18 is equal to minus 2.9x plus 31.7. So I'm going to minus 31.7 from both sides to get rid of the 31.7 on the right hand side there, which leaves me with minus 13.7 is equal to minus 2.9x. And now I'm going to divide both sides by minus 2.9 to get my value for x. So on the right hand side, we just get x. And then on the left hand side, so minus 13.7 divided by minus 2.9 will give us 4.724. So correct to one decimal place, that's 4.7 years. So that's our answer for part E, the question, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.